Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Night Owl and I'm gonna be sipping on my vanilla chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and then to also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, cobalt blue, deep yellow, and chrome orange. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources, which you can find in the video description. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paints and the pencil and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be drawing a basic outline for the owl. We're not gonna be doing any detail outline. We're just gonna be outlining the outside shape of the owl head. So we have basic shapes that we can block in with our first colors. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be using my pencil. I will guide you through markers and then we will connect those markers and by the time we're done, we should have the shape of an owl's head or at least part of an owl's head. So I'm gonna find the center of my canvas from top to, uh, on the top side from left to right about the center. I'm gonna come down about two inches, make myself my first little mark. I'm gonna go over to the right side of my canvas at about the same distance, make another mark. I'm gonna connect these two with an almost straight line, but I'm gonna get it to kind of dip just a little bit in the center, something like that. This is gonna be the top of the owl's head. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the top of my canvas here. I'm gonna to go to the left about one inch, make myself a little bit of a marker in through there. And then I'm gonna go about half the distance between here and the edge of my canvas. So somewhere about here, make myself another little marker. So this is maybe about two and a half, three inches away from the left-hand side of your canvas. We can connect this marker to here with just a gentle little curved type of line. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It would look better if it's got a little bit of a curve. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another marker. I'm gonna come to the right of this one, maybe about an inch, and I'm gonna go straight down to about right here. So this is maybe about an inch, inch and a half below this marker. So right about here, I'm gonna connect this marker to here with another kind of curved type of line. This is gonna be the ear. So we'll, we'll get this to come out something like this. And then the next marker that I'm going to make is right about here. So if this is about halfway down my canvas, I'm about an inch and a half to two inches below that and I'm in about three inches, which is a little bit to the left of here. So if you go maybe about an inch to the left of this marker here and bring it all the way down to right about here, that's gonna be your next marker. You can connect this to here with a slightly curved line. It doesn't have to have much of a curve at all, just a little kind of bit of a curve, something like that. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom left-hand corner 
make myself another marker and I'll connect this marker to the bottom of my canvas. This is going to be like the shoulder type of area. And you can give this one a little bit of a curve or a little bit of a wiggle. This will be the shoulder type of area of the bird so it does not have to be perfectly straight. And that is all we're going to be doing for our outline. So you can put your pencil away. We'll use our large paintbrush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our background with black paint. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm not gonna be doing any specific type of brush stroke. I'm just gonna be coloring in that specific area. I'm gonna bring it right up to my pencil mark and if you bump into your pencil mark and your, your owl shape morphs a little bit differently, don't worry about it because you'll have plenty of opportunity to modify that or make any little slight adjustments that you want. And I'm just gonna color that whole area in with a nice solid color of black paint and then do the same thing over on this left-hand side. You could certainly use a different color for your background if you wanted to make it like the sky or like a forest. You could certainly do blue or you can do greens and browns. Whatever color is exciting to you, feel free to do. Do just that and I'm just going to bring it right up to the edge of my owl and then we will be using this same paintbrush for the next step so after you get this owl painted in and again just go right up to that pencil mark you might find that you want to do a second layer on it if you want a really nice solid color feel free to do that but once you've got that background all nice and painted in you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our owl. I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark to medium gray, and I'm gonna be using that as my base color. So I've magically pre-mixed it for you guys to see where I'm heading. So what I in essence did was I did about equal parts of brown and black, and then I mixed in just a little bit of white. You don't need much white because that the white will take over and it will really make it nice and almost maybe perhaps too light. So just blend that white in just a little bit at a time. You are going to want to save some of your brown and some of your black for later. So you don't want to, if you've got the kit from us, you don't want to use all of those colors right now because you'll need a little bit later. And then once you've got the medium to dark gray that you desire, we're just gonna paint the entire rest of the canvas with that color. So I'm choosing to use a gray base for my owl as opposed to a black base, because you could certainly utilize a black base for, um, for the color of the owl, but for purposes that I, as I'm doing an animal such as this that has a lot of those darker tones in it, I don't want to get lost in the black and lose the dimensional element of the other fur. So I will at times choose to go with, instead of the darkest tone that I see in that particular fur, I'll choose to use the, the color that I feel dominates the fur. So in this particular image, I feel like there's a lot of gray, like a dark gray color underneath um, the fur, the, the feathers, I guess it would be, would be the appropriate thing to call it on an owl. Um, so I'm choosing to use a dark gray as opposed to a black, just so I have an easier time kind of building those layers of feathers. So again, it would work in either, either way. You could certainly utilize the black as a base coat um, but for me, again, this just makes my process a little bit easier. I am going right up to the edges of my black, and I'm not terribly concerned about it being a clean line. I feel as though the almost the messier that line is as it's meeting the black paint, the more natural it's going to be with the, with the texture of the feathers and all that good stuff. And I'm not concerned about having a perfect coat on this, um, on this base um, layer for it because I know we're going to be adding so many additional layers of information on top of this that the execution of this 
particular layer being perfect is not that important, especially since you'll probably see streakiness and things of that nature. So don't feel the need to make this particular layer super perfect because it's not really necessary at all because you're going to have so many additional things on top of it. But again, I am bringing it right to the edge of my black paint and even overlapping it if I want to. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this entire area painted in with this nice dark to medium gray, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the base coat for our beak and our eye. I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using just black paint. You could certainly use your small brush for this too if you'd like to, but I'm gonna be using my large brush. Um, I do wanna forewarn you though that before you start this step that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to, you know, take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So once your surface is dry, I'm going to load my brush with black paint. And I do want my bristles to kind of be in control. So what I'd like to do is I take my brush and I kind of squish it in the paint on the side of the palette, and that's gonna bring my bristles nice and squished together and in control. So I'm gonna do my area for my beak first. So this does not have to be a perfectly clean area. This is in essence gonna be just kind of the base coat for the area where we want the beak to be. So if yours ends up being a larger area than mine, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll put the, the distinct shape of the beak on later. So I'm gonna be about halfway up or down my right hand side of my canvas and I'm gonna come in at about what would be kind of the center of the face. So you can kind of imagine that to be maybe three inches away from the edge of your canvas. You can make yourself a little bit of a dot. And then I'm gonna bring this down to, I would say almost, or maybe a little bit more than halfway between here and the bottom of your canvas. So somewhere about in through there. Then I'm just gonna connect these two with a, a line and then I'm going to bring that area out just a little bit on either side. So again, this is just gonna, in essence, give us the area of which we want that beak to be. It does not have to be a perfect shape at this point. We're just kind of saying, all right, well, this is where I want it to land. It's gonna be about this long, and it's gonna be you know, in this, in this vicinity. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for my eye. So my eye, I wanna have in this general vicinity here, so the bottom of my eye is gonna be a little bit lower than the top of my beak. So if you come over to the left and then almost halfway between here and the edge, maybe a little bit closer to the beak, make yourself a little bit of a marker in through here. And I'm gonna go up from that about four inches, make myself another marker. And then I'm gonna kind of split the difference and go left to right about another four inches. So that's gonna give you the makings of a circular type of shape. So I'm just gonna kind of color this in. It doesn't have to be perfect around the edges. That's why I'm using such a kind of a loose type of brush in order to give myself these soft edges around the eyes. So that way when we go to build our feathers and things of that nature, we'll have this softness around the edges so it will blend in more naturally with um, with the feathers that we're gonna be putting on later. And then we are gonna be utilizing this same paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can, well, you don't even have to wash it, but <laughs> you can just get ready for the next step because we'll use this and some dark paint next time. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint in, I'm gonna call it our dark feathers. So this is gonna be anywhere where I feel like we're gonna have black type of feather markings throughout the left hand side which would be just the colors in the feathers and then on the right hand side there's going to be a lot of darkness because that whole right hand side of the 
owl's face is in the shadows. So we're going to be using a large brush. I didn't wash my brush because I used black on it last time, so I'm still using black on it this time. We'll use black and that gray color will be the dominant colors for here. So what I'm going to in, in initially do is just kind of map out where I want these dark areas to go. So I know that I'm going to have inside the ear is going to be really dark. It's going to have kind of a dark transition marking maybe down towards that eye a little bit. I'm going to have a dark area around here with black type of feathers going in through here. There's going to be a lot of black and white type of feathers that kind of come out underneath this beak. I'll have a little bit underneath um, like this cheek type of area. I'll also have some black markings down on this shoulder area and then a lot of black and gray over on that right hand side. So I'm going to start with the dominant areas which are going to be the really black areas on this left hand side. So I just have black paint on my brush. As I'm doing this, I'm going to be in my head mindful of the fact that we're making feathers. So as I'm doing this, I'm always going to be painting in a directional type of brush stroke that is going to speak to the direction of these feathers. So that way, if I don't paint it in 100%, I am benefiting from that dark gray underneath, which will allow me to have a nice dimensional type of look to my feathers. So I don't use a ton of paint. I'm going to do some coming up from this eye in through here, not using a ton of paint, just utilizing the darkness from the black as well as the darkness from the, the dark gray that's underneath it to get myself these areas that are going to have a lot of deep tones to them. We'll be adding highlights and stuff along these ears and different colors within the um, within the making of these areas. So I'm not terribly concerned, again, if it's perfect, but I do want to have that um, information that it is of a feathery sort. So down here, I'm going to kind of come down this edge like this just to get myself my marking, and then I'm going to switch my, my brush stroke to, to going left to right. So this is going to give me little bits and pieces of this dark color going left and right, which is going to help me when I go to add the other colors of the feathers. I'm going to have this right where it comes in this neck area. I'm going to have this kind of dipping in just a little bit further in through here as to giving you that shape of the face. I know I've got a really dark area kind of underneath the neck area, but I don't want to color in all of that gray paint. So that's why I'm utilizing almost like a dry brush type of technique to allow me to utilize that gray that's underneath there as an additional color source. I'm going to, on this left shoulder, I'm going to give myself a, what appears to almost be the bottom edge of feathers in this arcing type of motion with the black paint. So I'm not going to color in the whole thing, just giving myself some arcing type of motions. On the bottom edge in through here, I'm going to come down in this direction, which is a, um, a motion to the bottom and I'm going carving it, curving it kind of to the left. This is going to speak to the feathers that are coming down underneath that chin type of area. Uh, as I move to the right, I'm going to kind of switch directions of my brush stroke to kind of curving to the right, and that way that'll give me a little bit of movement to those feathers down and through there. The feathers that are going to be around the nose area in through here, these are going to kind of, they almost like poke out at the viewer and they kind of split and kind of stick out of the of the bird. So I'm going to use kind of my beak as my center point in through here and then I'm going to just kind of utilize my brush stroke in this arcing motion going away from that center area. That's going to give me the start or the making of the feathers coming out in that direction. And you can bring it all the way down here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space in through here because I know that I'm going to want some lighter feathers to be in through there so I will utilize um, that lighter tone for the background in, in a minute. So I'm going to do the same thing over on this right hand side and in a minute I will make this right hand side even darker by utilizing some more of that dark gray. But right now just getting the, the 
motion or direction of the feathers in through there. I'm going to do the same thing around the beak. So I'm going to have some gray or dark feathers kind of coming in towards that beak. So I'm going to utilize directional brush strokes to tell the story of what direction these feathers are falling in or are laying down on the face in. So I can do that on this side and I can bring this all the way to the eye just bringing these directional brush strokes. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right hand side. So I'm gonna bring my brush in this direction. So you can see we're not doing a whole heck of a lot, but we're, we're really starting to tell the story of how these feathers are laying down on, that, on this bird. So I've got these ones coming in through here. I'm gonna do around the eye in a similar motion, but I'm gonna just kind of be skirting this out in this direction just around that eye so we have um so we don't have a solid line around the eye this is going to give us room to play with all of the um vibrant tones that we'll put on top of it but it starts the you know it's giving us that direction of the of the feathers giving myself a little corner in the eye there and then on this forehead i want the forehead to be really dark there's going to be a lot of darkness in through here and all these feathers are just kind of kind of converge in between those eyes. So I'm just kind of utilizing my brush to bring these in towards that beak in through there. And then on the top of the head, it's just kind of like little fluffy feathers up on the top. So I'm just gonna kind of utilize my brush in this direction to get these to just kind of start their way up here. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint because I don't wanna overdo it. I definitely want you to still be able to see the direction of these of these feathers without overdoing it. And now that I've got the black in through there, I'm gonna start adding the black and gray on this dark side. So I'm gonna pick up black and gray at the same time on my brush so I can get this entire right side to be in the shadows. So I've got both of those colors on my brush. I'm gonna make sure that I have these little pieces up at the top of my of my bird to make sure that that's all taken care of. And then over on this right hand side, I'm in essence kind of putting this whole right hand side in the shadow. So you can use a lot of black on your brush. Um, I'm just gonna allow for a little bit of the gray to show through, but the majority of this right hand side is gonna be in the dark. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just kind of really going in and giving a lot of darkness in through here. If I feel I've gone too far, I just pick up a little bit more of that gray. The gray would show up more as it's emerging towards that, towards that beak area. And you can get these two to just kind of work their way into each other, the edge of this beak section into this um, into these feathers in through here. And then this will get darker as it dries. So if you're not quite sure if you went up far enough, you can just wait for it to dry a minute and then see if you wanna add any more or take away any. And then we will be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our beak. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are gray, white, blue, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna add a base coat of this like bluish gray color and we'll add a little highlight and a little shadow and we'll be all done. So we're just going to be doing half of this beak because the left half is the half that's gonna be in the light and the right half is gonna be in the shadows. We'll make sure that it blends and looks well and stuff. But how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take some of my gray and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and a touch of white to it. So I'm just going for like a, maybe I should turn this so you can see it a little bit better. I'm just going for like a grayish blue type of color. This to me makes it look nice and um, kind of shiny and have lots of dimension to it. So once I've got that color on there, I'm gonna give myself a um, line down the center and it doesn't have to be a totally straight line and it can have um, a little bit of curve and a little bit of painterly stroke to it. So don't feel like you have to have this beautifully straight 
fully executed line. Then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of rub it and get it to blend into that darkness. I don't need it to be a solid color. The more you can get it to blend and feel like it's part of the other sections, the more natural it's going to look. And then once I've got that in there, you can tweak it all you want. You can have light spots or dark spots, but I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white without washing my brush, and I'm gonna give myself a bit of a highlight on what I would deem as the, as the peak of the beak. And then I'm gonna maybe give myself a little bit of a highlight down this edge. I'm gonna pick up some of my, my bluish gray just so I can get this to blend in. And really, I'm just looking to add a bit of dimension onto the beak, making it look like maybe there's a little bit of um, reflection from something nearby because it's nice and shiny. So you can certainly have fun with getting the, um, the highlight to be however bright you want it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my black paint to get little pieces of these feathers along this left edge to almost feel like they're overlapping the the tip of that beak or the top of that beak just a little bit and again this is just one of those things that is going to add that bit of a dimensional element for you so just a little bit of black just making sure that i pull um, some of these pieces of feathers in through here and if you felt that this line was too distinct from the left to the right you can always with your black on your brush, pick up some of your gray as well and just get these two sides to just kind of blend a little bit more with, a, a, with more of a gradient from one side to the other and that'll get that beak to just kind of disappear into the darkness. And then we're gonna utilize the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful beak on here and you've got as much information and dimension that you want, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our eyeball. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, orange, blue, brown, and black. So I'm gonna use all my colors on my palette and maybe even my gray too. So I'll call them out as I use them though. So what I'm gonna in essence do is I'm gonna put the colored part on the eye down in this bottom portion. Then we'll put like a, a I like to call it the glaze or the haze on top of the um, eyeball itself. And then we'll put a reflection and we'll have this beautiful, wonderful owl eye by the time we're done. As I do this, I am going to be leaving a little bit of black area between my colored part and the feather part. So I'm gonna leave a black area there. I'm gonna leave a black area at the top as well. And the top area is gonna be a little bit wider than the area at the bottom, simply so it looks like the top of the eye is in the shadows. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start with my colored part. I'm gonna start with yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So I have both yellow and white. And the biggest trick here is you do not need to use a lot of paint. You want it to almost kind of dry on the fly for you so you can kind of be, continue to build the colors as you go through the process. So I'm gonna just designate the height of my colored area right now so I don't um, lose myself. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom, maybe about a quarter or eighth of a quarter to an inch. Then I'm gonna come up from there about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. And then I'm gonna say, okay, how, what, how high do I want it on either side? And I'm gonna want the, one, the color part on the right side to be just about maybe, if this is the halfway point up the eye, maybe just a little bit lower than that. So I'm gonna just kind of designate, designate myself a little marker there. And then on the left-hand side, I'm gonna get it to go a little bit higher than that one. So maybe somewhere in through here. And then I'm just gonna kind of connect um, or make myself an outline for the colored part of my eye. So something like this with my yellow and my white, and I'm not pressing hard, and I'm using a real kind of sketchily type of brush stroke. That way I can um, make any little modifications that I want along the way, and I don't really have to worry about my lines being too firm and too, um, 
distinct where it would be difficult to correct if I needed to. And then once I've got that on there, then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna continue with this yellow and white in the center area of the eye or of the color part of the eye because I want this part to be the brightest for me. Um, you can certainly modify your eyes to be in whatever color palette that you want. There are a lot of different colored owl eyes out there. So if you want yours to be more of, you know, just yellow, you could certainly utilize like a whiter area here and that'll make that yellow to pop. But I'm going to be using oranges and blues and, and browns and things of that nature. So I'm going to be um, kind of having my brightest area down and through here and it's going to dissipate. I'm going to have a little bit of that bright outline around the edges to also give it some, some dimension. So right now I'm going to pick up some orange paint and I'm going to start to give myself uh, this colored type of area over on this right hand side that's going to merge into my yellow and I'm going to do the same thing over on the left hand side in a second as well. So I've got my orange paint on my brush and I'm giving myself a pretty darn vibrant area but again I'm not overdoing it with the quantity of paint. I want to just kind of build this in these thin layers so I can control what's happening and of course you can like I said overlap that that yellow area just so you can build these layers of colors within this beautiful eye and then while that's kind of sitting and drying a little bit I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel I'm going to pick up some of my blue and I'm going to bring this blue up on this right hand side. I'm actually going to bring this up into the eye a little bit further than my original marker. This in essence is just kind of giving us almost a photorealistic look to this by giving this prism of colors as it's disappearing into the darkness. And this is just an, another one of those little tricks that will provide that extra bit of photo realistic quality to it. Um, you might find that this is one of those steps that you're like, mm, I'm not quite sure about that, but if you can execute it in a way that is um, believable, it makes sense. And if you dissect photographs and real um, aspects of, of color changing and variations, you'll see that when they, when they have the, the light on them in certain ways, they have this prismatic type of look to them. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now because I've got my main areas of color in through there. I'm gonna do one at least one more pass on that uh, area of color so I can make sure that I amplify it enough for my liking. So this is where I will tend to do um, like speckly type of marks within the eye. So I just picked up some yellow and white and I'm gonna get some really bright um, almost like twinkly type of marks throughout the throughout the eye and you can put these everywhere if you wanted to utilizing the white within these um, these twinkly light areas is going to allow for the vibrancy of the colors to pop through so because I'm using um, I'm, I'm not painting in the whole thing I'm just really giving myself what I would refer to as like a base for um, for what I'm going to put on there in a minute, which will be some vibrant colors. And this is going to allow those vibrant colors to pop even more. So I'm just utilizing my yellow and white to um, help enhance what's going to be some really vibrant colors in just a second here. So I've got my little twinkly sparkly marks in through here and they're very light in, in, in nature but when I put the other colors on top of them, you'll see how they're gonna, they'll really pop out quite a bit. I did say I was gonna use brown as well, so I think I'm gonna put a little bit of brown up in this top left-hand corner, just so I can have more, a little bit of warmth up in through here, so it almost looks like it's going up into the shadows. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna start utilizing just yellow right now and this is going to add on top of a lot of these white dots. It's gonna make that yellow really pop out and be really nice and vibrant. And you can, on, on these type of steps, you might find that you wanna sit here for 
a real long time and just kind of continue to add these vibrancies to the tones of the um, of the eye. I just picked up some orange. So now I'm gonna add to the vibrancy of the orange. And again, I'm just kind of utilizing this dotting type of technique, but you might find that you want yours to be more smooth. But to me, if, you, if I'm going for a realistic kind of look to things, especially eyes. I, I always tend to watch all of those color variations and sometimes they just seem like speckly marks to me. <laughs> so that's how I'm executing this. And of course you can fiddle with this for as long as you want to keep amping it up as much as you want to. But I'm going to move on to the um, hazy part of the eye here in just a second. I'm just kind of round out the bottom part here. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to add what I'm going to call the haziness to the eye. So this is going to be on the outside surface of the eye. I'm picking up a little bit of my gray color plus a touch of water. So a little gray, a touch of water on my brush. And you might find after you do this that you want it lighter than I have mine, but I'm going to just utilize that gray for now. And if I want to lighten it up in a little bit, I will. So when I do this, I'm not going to co cover the whole um, pupil, but I am going to be doing a good amount of the eye up in this top left hand side and I put it on up there and then I just start to rub it out down the down the um, eye part itself. I am actually going to put a little bit of white because that seems to be a touch too dark for me so I add just a tiny bit of white paint to my gray mixture because I want to make sure that this is evident. There's no sense in doing something if you can't see it. <laughs> so I just added a touch more white to my brush and now I am just kind of rubbing this out and bringing it down into um, the area of that colored colored part. And I'm just getting it to kind of blend into this black area. And you might find if you do too much, just bring back some of your black. If you want it to overlap this part a little bit, feel free to do so, but you don't want to cover up too much of the colored part of your eye. So you can just kind of keep playing with the intensity of that all you want. The more water that you have on your brush, the lighter it will look when it's wet. And then it will dry a little bit darker because you're utilizing, um, but when the water is within it, it ends up being more transparent when it dries. So it'll take on the colors behind it. And then once you feel like you've got that in its final resting place, I'm going to just dry my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some white paint and give myself a twinkle or a reflection in the eye. So I'm going to start this maybe about a third of the way down and I'm just giving myself two kind of curved swiped marks. So I'm going to start somewhere in through here. And I'm just going to kind of push my brush kind of hard in the beginning and then just let off on my pressure as I um, go towards the skinnier part of that um, reflection. So I'm going to push it here and then just kind of let up off on my pressure as I bring it towards the end. And then you can sit and tweak and modify your eye as much as you want. We will be utilizing our large brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put our colored feathers in place. So this is like the orangey, yellow, brown kind of feathers that are gonna be not white or black. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using orange, yellow, brown, probably a little white, and if I need to go into my gray or my black, I will, but definitely no blue on this step. So what I'm gonna do is, basically most of the areas that we still have the dominant color of gray as our background, those are gonna be the areas where I'm gonna be um, having some colored feathers, like on the tips of the ears, maybe a little bit up and through here, little sprinkle of them on the forehead and down and through here, but definitely the dominant area is gonna be this big gray patch and through here along the edge here and then down in these feathers right here. So I want them to look pretty natural and have a good variety of these three colors within them. So I'm gonna start with all three colors on my brush and I'm in essence gonna kinda of do a dark layer and then I will 
bring the white or little highlighted pieces in after I've designated where I want them all to go. So I'm gonna put a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of orange all on my brush at the same time, and about equal parts of each. And at times I might find myself dipping just into the orange or just into the yellow or just into the brown just to give myself a nice variety of um, tones throughout this. So I'm just gonna kind of start down here at the bottom. I'm gonna use the corner of my brush and I'm going to be utilizing m my directional type of brush stroke in order to get these little feathers on in the, in the direction that I want them to go. I'm not painting over all of these black little areas. This is just gonna give me um, this variety of directions giving the authenticity of how these feathers fall down along the side and then as I move my way up and whenever you feel oh that's a lot of orange or that's a lot of yellow just pick up like now I'm picking up brown and I'm just going to introduce a little bit of brown and I know that my colors are translucent so as they dry they are going to look darker because they have that that gray base underneath. As I'm going towards these edges in through here, I do want to make sure that I bring some of those feathers out past my um, gray area so that way they look like it's nice and fluffy along the edge of the bird so it doesn't look really clean along the edge. And I am just using the corner of my brush to perform this step. If um, I was to use the flat part, it might be a little bit too big and chunky. So I'm just kind of using the corner of my brush. I'm gonna go up in through the ear and just kind of pull some of these up in through this direction. I know I want some coming up in front of the ear like that. So just kind of bringing this up. And again, as we um, kind of watch it dry, you'll notice how it ends up getting much darker as it dries, so don't feel that the vibrancy of it when it's wet is necessarily gonna be its final resting place. So if you wanted to add more or less to it or take away, you could certainly bring back some of the black or some of the gray, So, but I would wait until you see it dry before you make that judgment call. Coming down in through here, again, I'm just really gonna sprinkle in little bits and pieces of this color in through here. I don't necessarily want a ton, but I definitely wanna make sure that there's a little bit represented in through there. Maybe a tiny bit in through here, but not, not much. And then same thing with this um, right-hand side, just teeny, teeny bits here and there. Nothing major because I know that the most majority of this is gonna be that white um, type of feathers coming out, but I want this area right in through here to be very dominant with these colors. So again, I don't need a lot of paint on my brush, but I wanna represent these, these orangey, rusty type of tones in through here. And I'm pulling them out with the corner of my brush in the direction that I feel that they would be coming off of the face. So that's pretty much the, the biggest trick to doing this is just making sure that you have those feathers. And it's the same thing with all animals, making sure that you have the feathers or the fur going in the direction that they would naturally. And then in the um, overlapping the neighboring areas, this I feel would be kind of shorter. So you can, if you want it to look shorter, just give it more of a dotting type of a look as opposed to a, um, a long, feathery kind of look. So now that it's kind of everything is in place, maybe a little bit more brown over into here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add little bits of highlights. So without washing my brush, just wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint on the end of my brush, and I'm gonna start kind of introducing a little bit of the white in through these, um, these feathers. And if you find that you, that you want more dimension to them, you can certainly put a little bit of your black or your brown or your gray within it. But right now, just kind of making sure that it all really makes sense, that I've got it going in the correct direction that I want it to go. And I don't need a lot of paint. If you find that your first layer was really thick and really still quite wet, you might want to kind of back off and wait a minute to get these lighter tones on top of here. But if yours, um, if you just used a little bit of paint on that first round, you should be able to 
kind of come back in here and sprinkle in these these bits of highlights to give it that that dimensional element and that texture to it but I'm not doing much with the lighter tone of it but that the lightness brings out those um, the vibrancy of the other colors so you could use like I just picked up white with a little bit of my yellow and orange because I want this edge over here to be a little bit more vibrant so you can certainly utilize um, white with those colors on your brush at the same time if you feel like you want to enhance the um, vibrancy of any particular area and I might come back through in a little while and do more in through here, but I'm thinking that this, this area is looking pretty good down here. My ear, I'm not gonna do a whole heck of a lot because I kinda want that to look like it's in the shadows, so I'm not really gonna do a whole heck of a lot to that. I'll put a little bit in this area in through here. So again, I don't need to do much, so I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and just gonna kinda give myself just a little bit in through here, maybe bring back a little bit of my orange and brown. So again, if you feel like you've gone too far, just dip back into the darker colors. You could bring a little bit of your black back, whatever you know works for you. And then I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle in a little bit of these highlights. I know over on this right-hand side, I definitely want that to really remain in the dark, but you, you know, you want to have a little sprinkle of a highlight here and there just to add that dimensional element. And then I got this big area in through here. So again, as much color and vibrancy as you want, I kind of went and did two layers in these areas just to lay down the idea of where I wanted those colors. And then I'm just coming back on top of it with a little bit more white on my, um, on my brush, which is allowing me to give the vibrancy to those to those particular um, colors. And again, if you wanted more orange or more yellow, just kind of keep building it in in the vibrancy that you want. If you want more white, it all adds to the illusion of the of the dimension to that hair or feathers or fur. So I just kind of keep building this in the direction that I want and in the intensity that I want. I am going to have a lot of the white feathers right around the eye. So this is something that I'm just kind of taking on in a slow type of fashion to make sure that I don't overdo it because it's very easy to overdo it. So just these lighter tones bringing them in through here. And then once I've got this area as much as I want to, bringing it as far into the face as I want to bring it. This is looking pretty good to me. Just making sure I've got this overlapped here. Sprinkle in a little bit in through here. Not much, but again, just keeping that directional brush stroke to it. And again, I, I did um, utilize white on this last go around, but I am also picking up that orange, brown, and yellow whenever I feel the use for it. If I feel like I want a little bit more orange in through here, I pick up a little bit more orange. So that's going to be a personal preference on your part. This is your owl. You get to make them as vibrant as you want. And then when you feel like you've got enough of these colored feathers in throughout the bird, you can wash and dry this large brush because we're going to utilize it for the next step. I'm going to just put a couple of little tiny ones coming up on the top of this head in through here. Just again, give myself as much information as I want. And then I will be washing and drying, if I can ever stop, <laughs> washing and drying this big brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the white feathers. And if I've called them fur throughout this, I really apologize, because I do that all the time. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my large brush, and I'm gonna be using predominantly white paint for the most vibrant parts, but I'm gonna start with the gray paint plus white. So I'm gonna build my way to the light. This way, it doesn't all turn white on me and I have some great dimension to the feathers. So I'm gonna start with, you could even, I suppose, make a lighter gray, but I'm just gonna use both the gray plus white on my brush at the same time. And like the other feathers, you do not need a lot of paint on your brush. The less paint you have, the more control that you will, that you will 
have throughout the whole thing. So I'm going to just kind of start at the bottom here, I guess, and give myself more of these directional type of feathers in through here. I know I want some really light feathers going in this main area right in through here and I want them to intermingle with those darker areas that we originally put down in through here, those little black streaks. So I want to just kind of start this light transition with a very little bit of paint on my brush all the while knowing that I want that right hand side to remain in the dark so I don't want to overdo it and I'm just really proceeding cautiously and slowly and just adding these little bits of feathers throughout this area. I'm going to have a big white or light piece of uh, or section of the feathers in through here, letting them overlap into the colored sections of the bird. I'm going to have just a little bit in through here. This area I wanted to kind of remain on the darker side, so I'm not going to put too much in through there, but I'll have like a little white patch coming on in through here. And you can put your little white patches wherever you want to. This is, again, your bird. You, you have it resemble whatever you'd like. So I'm gonna reload my brush with gray and a little bit of the white in order to start the um, vibrancy from um, emerging in this little area. And I'm just using the corner of my brush. I'm watching kind of where my dark areas are so I don't paint over them all because those are what's going to add that dimension where you can see through these feathers and you can see in in deep into the um into the and uh, into the depth of the feathers themselves and i'm doing them in that directional kind of brush stroke to just get it um keep that that direction to it so we have these big poofy areas that are coming out from underneath the, um, the beak. And then as I go towards this right side, again, not doing hardly anything on this right side, just little teeny tiny bits in through there. I'm gonna reload my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and get this whole area with some of this grayish type of layer to it. And again, my gray that I'm using is the background gray plus white. So this way I am progressively getting towards my lighter areas and I, towards the exterior of, the, of these feathers. I'm again keeping my directional brush stroke, letting some of these feathers overlap the other one so it looks nice and natural. I'm gonna bring this all the way around the eye and again, I'm overlapping it into those colored sections, overlapping it into the black sections, just making sure that everything talks together and it looks like it is overlapping and blending together. Not necessarily blending together, but living together, I guess is a better way to put it. As I come up and through here, this area is kind of a little confusing because we have feathers that are coming in towards the beak in through here. And then they kind of just kind of um, uh, almost like poke out right by this eyeball. And then they kind of turn directions and start going upwards. <laughs> so you're going to have fun in this little section here because they go in all different kinds of directions in through here. We got some coming around the eye in through here. I might pull out my tiny brush when I um, go to do little maybe eyelash type of um, uh, feathers around the eye but right now just kind of going with that white and black I mean white and gray on my brush in through here very little bit of paint just allowing these colors to start to talk to one another and start to get that um, the whiter areas to emerge I'm gonna have a little bit of white feathers in through here so again just that gray plus a little bit of white on my brush right now, just overlapping. And I'm thinking then that's pretty good. Maybe a couple tiny pieces of this lighter gray up and through here, just to give myself that, again, the textural elements of the feathers up and through here. And I, I mean, I can't stress enough how little I'm doing right now because you do not need to do a lot in order to sell the story of this having a lot of texture. We did a fabulous thing with starting with that dark gray base 
and all we're doing is just in putting little enhancements here and there, getting these little tiny pieces to emerge, especially since the majority of this bird is in the shadows. We don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. So teeny tiny bits of paint on your brush will will sell that story. There's You don't need to do a lot. And then once I've got all of that in place, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm not gonna wash it because I want the transition to the white feathers to be to be um, gradual. So I wiped my brush off on my paper towel, then I'm picking up a little bit of white and wiping it off on the side of my palette. Again, so I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kinda keep building towards my whiter feathers. And so every time I go to build another layer of the lightness, my real estate where I'm putting my paint gets smaller and smaller. So I'm not gonna put it in as big of an area as I did the first layer, because that would just say, oh, well, now that's all just the same color. If I wanna build it to um, the exterior white, I put it in a smaller area. And as I go into these little pieces in through here, same thing holds true. I'm just doing a little tiny piece of the area. I'm not doing as much of an area as I did with the gray. And this way it allows it to show some of that gray. It allows it to show some of these lighter pieces. And you can even, if, you, if you're not feeling like the, if you don't want it to go all the way white yet, you could certainly use white with a touch of brown on your brush. That gives a nice natural um, progression into the lighter uh, feathers. So if you are hesitant about pulling out the white right now and want another kind of um, progressive layer underneath it, you can certainly add a bit of brown to your brush as well, and that'll give you a nice progression. And right in through here, just making sure that I've got that transition into the darkness, maybe put a little bit in through here, and then I'm going to put some in through here and here. And of course, all the while I'm thinking, oh, I want this to kind of make sense with the, with the feathers around it. So if you feel like you want to overlap it, or even in through here, if you felt like you wanted a couple of the light tips of um, feathers, the whiter kind of representation of feathers in through here or little bits of additional highlights, feel free to put them. Same thing with in through here, just making sure that everything kind of talks together. And then I will um, get my brighter areas to take shape along this nose or along the beak. And again, very little paint on my brush. And I'm going to get these pieces to just kind of emerge right out of right out of the darkness. So again, corner of my brush, not a lot of paint, putting my head back so I can see it from a distance using that directional brush stroke. And again, if you ever feel like you go too far with the, with the light paint, just bring back some of that gray, bring back some of the black. You can always reverse it with a little bit of the darkness. And then again, I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit more of the brightness in through here. And you can see I'm just progressively getting towards the lighter areas. I think I might pull out my small brush in a minute just to get some teeny tiny details around that eye, but still just using this one for now, making sure that I've got enough lightness for myself to, to be happy before I pull out that tiny brush. And this is looking pretty good to me. He's looking, he's looking like he's got a lot of texture in his feathers. If it's a he, I'm not sure if it's a he or she. I, I don't know if I know the difference between a male and a female owl, but maybe you do. And then I think I, I'm going to take out my small brush here because I want to get a couple of little tiny pieces of um, little information around the eye. So just little tiny singular pieces around the eye. And you don't have to do this. This is just one of those things that the Virgo inside of me tells me I want to have little tiny details around the edges here. So little white dots and pieces of the feathers coming around. Maybe we've got a couple along the um, top of the eye in through, in through here. If I can position my hand the way that I want to, just these little streaks of longer pieces in through here, singular pieces. That'll make me feel like I've, I've got the, um, the realistic aspect of, of this all telling the, the story I want it to tell. And then I would just kind of keep 
fiddling with it. If I wanted to add any more in my colored areas, you can certainly pick up a little bit of the yellow and the and the orange just to get all of this to kind of talk well together, make the transition nice from the white fur or white feathers into the um, colored feathers. If you needed more black or brown, feel free to just kind of keep tweaking this as much as you want. And then we have one little tiny step left to go, and that's going to be with your small brush, if I can ever stop doing this. I'm just going to kind of keep fiddling with mine as I do, as I normally do because, you know, that's the hard part about painting is knowing when to stop. So once you feel like you're all set with yours, we're going to utilize our small brush for the next step. So you can just, oh, I think I want, no, I'm not done. I want some more white down here. Almost done. Almost done. A little bit more white down in through here. Get this vibrant little chest feathers going in through here, and then uh, that's looking good to me. Okay, so you can get out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom, the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you would like to. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful night owl and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.